All right, this is lab two, falling with drag. The objective was to analyze the motion of an object, in this case a ping pong ball, uh, as it fell through the air and then model its motion using vPython. In this lab, I assumed viscous drag of the form f equals minus bv, pointing in the opposite direction to velocity, uh, since the speeds involved are very low. Um, so a question I wanted to answer was, how does a gravity-only model compare to a model that incorporates drag? So let's look at my observations. Um, here I chose my origin to be the original point where the ping pong ball was as I dropped it. Um, I measured lengths based off of my known height of 1.8 meters. Um, it fell, I tracked its motion, um, and copied and pasted these into a spreadsheet uh, and graphed it. I found its final velocity to be 4.6 meters per second. So how do I build a model uh, that matches those observations? Uh, we start with Newton's second law, which is f equals ma, or a equals f over m. Um, and in our computational model, we choose small time steps, small delta t, uh, do some algebra, and deduce that to get the velocity in the next time step, we add our current velocity to f over m times delta t. Um, and f is a vector, this is a vector equation. So this um, underlines all of our labs. The core of all of our models is based on this. The only thing that changes from lab to lab is f net. And in this particular lab, f net is minus mg, which is the force due to gravity, minus bv, which is due to the drag force. So here the velocity update model that I use to do Python is uh, current velocity minus mg minus bv over m times delta t. I had to empirically find a value for b that would make the final predicted position match up with the observed final position, and I found that a b value of 0 0.0063 made that happen. So here is a graph um, that I obtained from Python. Um, the green line here is the raw data from Tracker that I was trying to model. Uh, red was the model that didn't take into account drag at all, and you can see that that overpredicts the motion. Um, and blue, or purple, this one right here, um, does end on the final position of, uh, that I observed, and that's cooked into the model, so that's obviously to be expected. Uh, I would say that there are two things to note about this. Um, one is both models, gravity and drag, coincide pretty similarly, and for most of the fall they predict roughly the same things, up until about here where they start, where gravity starts to, gravity only starts to overpredict the motion, um, and that is because my value for B, the strength of the drag force, was 0 .0065, it's a very small number, um, so there's not much drag force. Also, I would say that both models uh, match the data well, um, suggesting that, uh, well, you could say that this discrepancy here uh, suggests that the model is inaccurate. However, these distances are comparable to the size of the ping pong ball itself. So I wouldn't chalk that, I would chalk that up to a tracker error, and I wouldn't attribute that to a fault in the model. But this model, it looks like it is accurate. Um, so the only thing that differs in the gravity-only and drag models are the concept of terminal velocity. So terminal velocity is, a f is an aspect of a model with drag. Uh, that's a consequence of f equals ma. Um, terminal velocity is when, you're, when you travel so much and the forces cancel between drag and gravity so that force is zero and you've reached constant velocity. Constant velocity means acceleration equals net force equals zero. So under a drag force, when does this happen? So we set f, which is minus mg minus bv, to zero. Um, so do some more algebra and find that you reach terminal velocity when v is minus mg over b. So that right there is our terminal velocity. Um, mg over b is the magnitude of terminal velocity under this model, and for my ping pong ball, the predicted terminal velocity with my values for m, 0 0.0027 kilograms, 9.8 meters per second, and 0 
six eight for B. Uh, that predicted terminal velocity is 42 meters per second, which is way too fast, and that's unreasonable. Which makes me think that the true value of B um, is probably higher than what I got um, by just looking at the fraction of a second that the ping pong ball was in the air. My predicted value for B is lower than what it actually is. Um, so then what if? Uh, what if the ball initially started out with a non-zero initial velocity? How would the terminal velocity change? Well, if this is terminal velocity, you can't, uh, it doesn't change regardless of what the initial velocity is. So, terminal velocity doesn't change. Um, that's, uh, yeah, terminal velocity is independent of initial velocity. Uh, it only depends on mass, gravity, and the constant of proportionality. So, that's the lab. Thank you.